Hello and welcome to season three, episode one of the Let's Face It podcast. Today we're joined with uh, Matthew Toma. And this uh, episode is proudly sponsored by Kira Daily Makeup. Um, Kira, who's been a great supporter to Let's Face It um, over the last year and uh, was a great help last week for our first live event, which we'll touch on in a wee minute. And uh, Kira Daily Makeup offer a wide range of courses, makeup courses over 40s classes. Uh, they have a amazing online store which Matthew knows all about uh yeah loads of different things around makeup I'm not really big into makeup but all I know is that it's a it's a wonderful brand and great people and maybe Matt to be honest with you Matthew well uh, I'm not big into makeup either but uh well my my company does a bit of work for uh, Cure Daily Makeup so we would do some of the marketing there so yeah yeah, check it out, kiradailymakeup.com to be and to be honest um Kira actually said there today that the impact that you have had which we'll get into in a wee second around uh, the work that you actually do and stuff but the the impact that you have had in her company in terms yeah. of like you've opened up her eyes to a whole lot of different things and yeah. i think it's just testament to you the very fact that work here is that in her business life and stuff but yeah. the, the fact that she has amazing things to say about you is just incredible so um no that's, it's amazing that's the thing like whenever we with clients like i don't look at people as clients so you know they're more like humans and they, she's actually got a talent and we're very lucky because most of the people that come through my digital media agency um, are just so inspirational. They've got their own businesses and we're constantly being, you know, businesses are being put in front of us. We're constantly being tested as well, which is good. So it's brilliant. Do you, do you prefer whenever, like, see whenever you're, do, like, you just say, for an example, you go to Kira, like, do you prefer Kira saying, right, this is what I want? Or do you love bringing new ideas to the table? I love hearing where they're at, like where everybody's at. I mm. like hearing what, because the thing is, a lot of agencies will go in and say, you know, this is what you need to do. and But they're not realizing that person's already the expert. That person's mm. already built a business that has been successful. They know more than you mm. about their product. It's just about you bringing the knowledge that you have to the table and not being arrogant about it. And just saying, listen, I know all this information. You know all that information. Let's put it together. Work together. We always say, like everybody who comes through Bankhouse Media is collaborative. It's never we're never going to solve all their problems on their own and we're they're never going to do it on their own. So we just say, look, we have to be collaborative. We have to make sure that we work together, be totally honest as much as possible. There's no point somebody coming in and saying, you know, we're doing 20 grand a week and they're not yeah. because then we're, we're working off an impossible task at the start. So honestly, we're very just open and then we just get stuck in, you know. Mm, that's incredible. So yes, check out kiradailymakeup.com. Yeah. Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> for all your makeup yeah. needs, brands, and uh, get a nice smoky, smoky eye and all. That's all I know about makeup. A I nice know, smoky it, eye. Yeah. But I don't yeah. mind a smoky eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's like good. But, yeah. does it well. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, Matthew, like, this is the first time for, for, for the listeners, just to put it in the context. Like, I met you for the first time on Thursday night at our yeah. first gig. Um, what it, was it, was, a, it was amazing. Yeah. Did you um, enjoy it? So Kira said to me last minute, do you want to come along to this? And I said, yeah, do you want to know what? I'm not doing anything. Yeah. It was my last sort of week in Belfast. I'm leaving tomorrow. And then I just thought, do you want to know what? I'll go along. And I, it's not that I didn't know what to expect, but whenever I walked in and I seen the setup and then I seen BBC Live and then or some TV show yeah. and just with the whole set and the lineup, I was really excited. I loved it. Yeah, it was I, I, I was. It was. I'm still a wee bit sort of shocked of how well it went and stuff Having like that. Having to bring out more seats as well. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And I'm glad that the council didn't come in. Otherwise, it would have <laughs> shut if I could have got shut. Oh, but that, yeah. no, it was really, really good. And I suppose like a big thanks to everybody who came. And yeah, keep an eye out in the next couple of uh, weeks for our next live event. So we're going to keep the show going and keep it keeping it on the road because the amount of people that actually got energy and mm. they took away nuggets and, and my whole purpose I suppose Matthew is to show people that we can have a better quality of life yeah. and you know all about that like with your with your journey I've had a few ups and downs yeah not gonna lie um, God where do you even start you know I, I actually grew up in Lurgan in County mm. Armagh and um, I left school at 16 because I didn't know at the time, but I've been since diagnosed with dyslexia, so I really struggled in school and I hated it. I could not wait to leave. So I started working at 16, like straight away as, as quickly as I possibly could. And then I got into a trade, very much hands on. And I worked in Montgomery refrigeration for years in Belfast, mm. um, like 13 years, actually, which is crazy uh, from I was 16. But on the side, I like bought houses and I got into property and had businesses invested in it, loads of things going on. Um, and I thought I had it all set and I actually got caught out in the last recession, um, okay. in the in the previous recession to this one. Well, the one that we're kind of going into at the minute. So like the 2008 to 2010 one. 
Um, so I literally like lost my houses, lost my job. Everything went, you know, tits up just weeks before my 30th birthday, whenever I was meant to have it all sorted out. Um, and it was on the 1st of August 2012, I signed on to unemployment in the south of Ireland. I lived in Ireland at the, in the Republic. I lived in Dublin. Um, and I ended up signing on to unemployment and going through two years of that, you know. Mm. Um, and I didn't really tell anybody from home. I couldn't really tell my family what was going on because I was ashamed. You know, I was very ashamed of what I had. Because I was meant to have everything sorted. I bought my first house when I was 19. Mm. You know, I always had money. And I always was doing everything I wanted. You know, lived in Australia, travelled, done all that stuff. And then the next thing I was going in and saying, hey, I have no money. I, I need help, you know. Mm. Um, and I was very ashamed at that time, but I didn't realize, looking back now, that was my weakest moment, but it actually was my biggest strength because even being able to go in and do that and get helped out, it, it works so well helping like other people, you know, through this. And I don't mean that by helping other people, by just saying that. I'll actually just tell you a short story. So I had this organization that helped me get back and open my business. They were called the uh, um, Inner City Enterprise. And they help people get off unemployment, put them through like a week's long course. And then they help you set up your business and you get to keep your unemployment for a year. Right. right? So I was able to set up a business and keep my unemployment for a mm. year because I knew that I could, I knew I had um, potential of working and I wanted to open a film production company. In the two years I was on unemployment, I worked for a production company for two years, the whole time nearly, um, producing low budget to no budget feature films. And I was learning a lot and I wanted to open my own company. So I ended up going through ICE. They helped me open my business, um, got me on my feet. I ended up doing all the stuff that I'd set out to do, making movies and traveling and working with really good actors as well. Um, and I ended up going back and we end up winning Most Innovative Business of 2015. And then I got invited to come back onto the board. And I now sit on the board of that business um, and now work with like the young entrepreneurs that are coming through. So whenever I say like going through those hard yeah. times, whenever I'm sitting with people at the young entrepreneurs, for example, that there's 30 of them in the room. And I say, you know, who on here has been on unemployment? Like I can say it to them because I've been there, you yeah. know, and we've actually been through it. And I, I love doing that. We do like about 120 people a year put through that program within City Enterprise. Um, and it's creating businesses constantly. That's incredible, mm. isn't it? And I can actually relate to you. That's nearly like the full circle moment, isn't yeah. it? Actually going <laughs> to sit on that board and I can relate to you in terms of like, the day I walked into rehab and going through that and then yeah. now I'm just I was working the other day like I'm working there full time and it's just class like that feeling of even sitting in a, in a room with people and saying yeah. here I'm you on the make... same boat but this one, is where you can go we like... were on the board we were in the room and they said one of them asked a question do we really need this and I was like yes we of course we need yeah. it you know I, I was I couldn't even believe someone had asked the question about mm. a specific I said yeah if I didn't have that I wouldn't have a business today yeah. and you know that was it. So I, I'm really thankful for them. And I, anything I can do, give them back, I always do with that organisation. It's class. And you did say something there when you come in about things don't happen to you, they happen um, for you. Yeah, well, that's my motto. Like, things don't happen to you, they happen for you. So no matter what it is you're going through, you have to think in that moment, which I, I'm really good at pulling myself out of, like, stressful moments and saying, OK, well, this isn't this happening for me right now. Yeah. So what, what is the lesson? And try to speed up that process where I don't have to wait maybe six or seven years yeah. for it to come around, you know? And it's so true. And even hardship, which we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. touch on in a minute, but I, I actually remember reading something about uh, <clears throat> two people being in, in a prison cell mm -hmm. and one looks out and sees mud and the other one looks out and sees stars. Yeah. So it's no matter, like we all have obstacles. Yeah. We all have our traumas or our emotional triggers yeah. or these things that's happened to us. But it's accepting it, I suppose. Yeah. Well, this is just my take on it, accepting it and processing it, dealing with it, but also saying, you know what, this could have happened to me for the right reasons to make me yeah. who I am today and to make it's, me push it, on. It, it, it just depends on, like, this. all these things are going to happen, so it's just whatever way you deal with them, yeah. you know, and that's it. And before, I'm, I'm six years sober now, um, through that, my whole journey of being on unemployment for some reason i could always find money for drink it's <laughs> amazing isn't it? isn't it mad yeah. you know i was living in the most expensive city in europe at that time mm. it I that said probably is still up there with dublin and i was getting 188 pounds a week or euros and i still find money for drink i still find life. people to drink with yeah but um but through my through my sobriety and getting off alcohol you know it taught me a lot of lessons about myself of like the things that were happening to me how i was accepting them and how i was reacting with emotional or hmm. stressed or under some form of stress that alcohol was causing you know i was slowing down my own evolution in a way you know just by doing that and not really fessing up to the fact that do you want to know what i could be doing things right now today that could help me 
you know, speed up this process. Mm. And putting things in place to do that. But yeah. uh, like, I wanna even, I wanna talk about your sobriety in a wee bit, but even in terms of drinking and, and being a caught up in active addiction, mm -hmm. um, which is a horrible place to be in. But yeah. looking at someone like you, people look at me, but I'm and I looking at you going, Jesus, you're six years sober, yeah. you're living out of a backpack for the right reasons yeah, and traveling yeah, yeah. all around the world and yeah. living in different places. And like, how, how, how bad were things in active addiction, Matthew? Um, well, the, the thing about it is, <clears throat> I drank every day. Yeah. I lived in I lived in Portobello in Dublin, and my office was in Temple Bar, so mm -hmm. Camden Street's a long walk, you know. <laughs> and uh, and I loved it, and I never got in a fight. I rarely got hung over, but my lifestyle was so different. There's five things that I always said that that I put down to in my own sobriety, and I I was if people have came to me in hundreds at this point, you know, in different ways and yeah. forms about asking me about addiction and and going through it, whether it's emails and Instagram and YouTube and all those different things. But I always say, like, you know, I, I checked in on my, my finances, you know, my how my relationship with my friends, how's my relationship with my fitness, how's my relationship with my health, health and fitness, I looked at two different things, and also my relationship with my businesses, you know, mm -hmm. and those five were shot, they were, they weren't firing on all cylinders, nowhere near it, I was living in a one bedroom apartment in Portobello that was small and I couldn't, couldn't get out of, you know, mm. um, and you know, I knew that I had to do something, but I was pushed right to the limit with health. That's how I ended up getting off it, getting off drink, uh, because my stomach had swollen out so far that one day I couldn't breathe. And one of my friends came around. He was like, OK, you're not you're not being dramatic. Yeah. Um, so he ended up giving me a tablet just to release a bit of wind and stuff. And I went to the hospital and turned out I had like diverticulitis, hiatus hernia, three of my liver bloods were off, high cholesterol. My body was just shot. It mm -hmm. was like you know, I could see it when I looked in the mirror, but everybody, nobody really knew as much that I couldn't stop. And I had been trying to stop quietly to myself for about three years. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, that pushed me to the limit, you know, and the, the doctor said to me, look, you have to readdress this. You have to maybe stop drinking spirits because I, I people, I had hollow legs and I couldn't taste spirits like I could have drank it straight nearly, you know. <laughs> And, and I was like, so whenever I went out, we would have all been sitting, everybody would have been drinking at the same pace, but mine would have been a tiny bit stronger. Mm. And I probably would have knew how to stay out a bit later with other people and stuff, you know. So my business and everything was working and going, but I couldn't, I couldn't stop. Yeah. And even like, did you find yourself constantly having to put on a mask for people? Well, I was constantly hiding the fact that I was drinking. Like quit, people questioned me. Some people yeah. that were close to me that worked with me had said to me, do you think you maybe drink a bit too much? Mm. So then I would have then avoided that person a bit. Okay. You know, so I would have always put myself in with other people that drank and, you know, they make you I feel did like have, what you do yeah, is normal. Nearly. Oh, totally, yeah. yeah. Like I was absolutely lying to myself, yeah. like of how much I was drinking. One day we had a barbecue at a hotel and there was four bottles of white wine on the bill and we're only mm. there for the afternoon, but I was the only one drinking white wine. Okay. So like, you know, but that was with everybody else, but no one would have really noticed, Yeah. you know? Yeah, because I actually used to do that, like them things even within like jumping from friend group to friend group. So whenever mm -hmm. a certain friend group would have got to a certain point that would have been like, fuck, he's, like, he's right, I've boom, out yeah. the gap, away to a different place. And then so hopefully they don't really get to know me that well. But it got oh, to yeah. the point where I was just surrounding myself with other addicts oh, and yeah. nearly funding their addiction. Oh, yeah. Like as in buying them like a bag I, of Coke, buying them as paints yeah. to stay with me for the night to make it look like what I was doing, as you yeah. say, it was just normal. Oh, yeah, I always knew when to like line up shots yeah. or to like do yeah. something like that. You know, I thankfully never got into cocaine. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I tried it a couple of times and it just the sensation of it in my nose, I couldn't handle it. Mm. And I'm so glad that I that that was the case with me because you know, with my addictive personality, it moves, you see, it moved into work then. Yeah. And um, it moves into different things. So I have to be aware at all times because work then ended up becoming the thing. And in fairness, now it was healthy enough because the business done really well. And I was building, building it from scratch, mm. you know, so it was good. But yeah, I always knew when to buy a round of shots. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so <did I>. yeah. <laughs> and do you know what? Some of it is good crack at the time, but people don't see the, the other side of it whenever mm. you're in that one bedroom flat or whatever on your yeah. own in Dublin and in the pits or whatever. Like, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Or knowing that what you're doing isn't even right and it doesn't yeah. sit well with you and, and, and stuff like that. But like in terms of actually, so obviously <clears throat> physically, you yeah. were probably only able to physically, do it again. Yeah, it like, done, yeah. And did it come to a point where you had to reach out, ask for help or what the avenues did I you had, take? I had contacted Al-Anon okay. before. For, because one of my friends was going through a hard time and I didn't know what to do, Okay. you know, and, and um, someone said to me, look, why don't you try this group? 
So whenever I went through that group and was talking to them, they were kind of giving me information of what to do as somebody to support mm. and explain to me what they were going through. So whenever I ended up coming around, it was almost like I kind of knew my head. It was almost like I knew what I was supposed to be doing. So it, it made it easier for me. And then at that time, um, Shane Lennon, a really good friend, ended up, he'd been like 13 years sober. Yeah. Um, and I just went to him and just, I'd said, like, I'm ready to give up booze. And he just knew because he lived with me for years and he knew that this was always coming, you yeah. know, because he's seen the dark sides. Um, and then he just ended up kicked into mode and was like, look, you know, this is what you have to do and end up just really helping me. And really, really helped me. And that that is classic. And even seeing it from a different perspective, because I would all I, I was on the Ulster radio last week talking to Kate Conway about about yes. that. So for loved ones and stuff, for even yeah. And it, and it is such a sort of it's a hard area to be yeah. a loved one, isn't it? For looking into someone who's an active addiction, as in do you be too pushy or do you wait until they come to you or do you know as yeah. like because you can relate this like your friend yeah. probably seen that you had a problem long before you, you thought oh, yeah. or accepted that you had a problem. So it's yeah. not it's actually it's creating an environment where they feel comfortable and we talked about it off camera at the start around sort of these environments I suppose mm -hmm. within AA and it's a bit yeah. of a taboo and I think we live in a, in a society sorry where like an alcoholic mm -hmm. is someone that is labelled it's, it's, there is a kind of stigma to it and before like as we said off camera you know alcohol AA has saved like some of my friends lives got me sober right 100%, 100%. Yeah. but I think that there's a whole other generation that aren't going to relate to it the same way Yeah. you know whenever I was growing up there was AA in our lives. My uncle Sean died at 47. You know, my mm. granddad stopped drinking. Had a certain, just all my family, there's about 10 or 12 of them just stopped drinking at a point and were like, they don't identify as anything. Mm -hmm. They just stopped drinking. Mm -hmm. um, I nearly had a couple of slip ups. That's why I end up moving into, okay, accepting the fact that I am an alcoholic and I need to take this a bit more seriously than just, I never did break it, but I nearly did a couple of times. But, it wasn't really right for me in that moment and if I ever did need it I would go and mm. I would do rehab like the way you did I have mm. no shame about doing yeah. that but I think that's a whole new generation of people coming through that are addicted to their phones addicted to social media you know addicted to various different things and I just don't think the AA model is going to hit all of those and I think all of those are going to need something yeah. that's going to I don't know yeah, but I, 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 it's modernizing it, and I, I listen. I'm with you. Uh, mm. I think my whole purpose in life is to show people, yeah, not tell, show people that this is how you can have a better quality of life. And you know, me and Kieran and Kira, I suppose yeah. we're all very close. And uh, the things that we do, as in like tapping in and doing cold water, swimming and yeah. climbing mountains and doing, and I would love to be able to incorporate that sort yeah. of group therapy within. Yeah connecting with nature and connecting with things and I said it the other night that's where I want to take let's face yeah. it in terms of me having my own rehab centre here in the north and and implementing them things yeah. and like what's next so I always as you know say about be excited about who you want to become mm -hmm. and the things that you've done yeah as in from you stopped drinking in the last sort of or six like years being, have been unbelievable yeah what, what, what do you I've, start like I know that's the thing like I, I all I can say to somebody is that you know my life is unrecognisable to what it was you know I ended up doing a documentary last year. It was called Street Leaks. Yeah. It's on Amazon Prime. You can watch it. Anybody can have a look at it. Um, street Leaks? Street Street Leaks. Okay. So it's about an organisation. In it, it, Have you ever heard of the Homeless World Cup? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we followed the Irish team to Oslo. Yeah. Um, and the females team, the male and the female team. And to qualify for it, you have to be, I think you have to be sober for two years. Okay. Um, I, but it's everybody. I mean, there was a girl there who ended up, uh, was on the streets for 20 years. She lived on the street. She lived in Stevens Green Park for 20 years. Heroin, like she couldn't walk at one point because she was injecting heroin into her feet. She ended up doing the Late Late Show, Late Late Show for us, like promoting it. Colin Farrell is in the movie as well. He's a um, patron of the Irish Homeless Street Leagues and an ambassador for the Homeless World Cup. So I filmed with Colin out in LA in his house. And, you know, we've done so much with that movie, you know, and it's, it's done really, really well. But watch that to show you what can be done yeah you know no matter how low or how far you've gone there is people who have went further and came back yeah do you know what i mean so no matter whenever i watched that I, whenever i was making that there was parts of it that i couldn't even be in the room because i was so moved mm. um and i was speaking to one of the girls at the premiere and there was champagne everywhere and it was in lily bordello's at the after party and i said how do you cope you know with champagne around 
Do you feel like drinking it? And she said, no, I'm okay now. And I said, I'm still struggling a bit, you mm. know? And she said, why do you not drink? And I said, no, I'm sober. Like, I think that time, maybe three years mm. or something. And it really did, did bridge a gap where she kind of looked at me like being the producer of the movie. Pedestal. Being something else. And I was like, no, everybody's the same. Colin Farrell said it. Like, with the ball kicking football out on the street, you know, it united everybody. It didn't matter where you were from, what class, background you were from, no matter what it was, as soon as you were playing football, it took all that away. And this does the same thing. Um, Christine went on, actually passed away of cancer, madly. It wasn't mm. even to do with her her. I think she was up where, where you were as well. Okay. But um, she was an unbelievable girl. Like, got her whole life sorted, got a girlfriend, got an apartment, mm. and then cancer ended up bloody. That's mad. You know, she passed away from that. But with the that movie, is we feel like it really tells her stories. And that's what I want to do with film. Like, yeah. everything that I do with film, whether it's the evolution of success or street leagues or dive or whatever movies I work on, I want them to be, like, real stories that show people that it's okay, it's normal to be a bit low and, and, yeah. and, not, and not don't have it all together. Yeah, of course. and like, nobody does. 100%. And I think that we do, like, live in a world where, like, I'm looking at you and you're coming in the day, right? And mm. I'm a wee bit nervous, do you know what I mean? Because of the things that you've achieved and what okay. you're doing. And, and, and I'm like, but that's on me yeah. because you're a normal person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And we live in a society where we're putting these people up on pedestals and being like, wow, like, I'm being a wee bit hurry furry. And that's what I've learned about even addiction and alcoholism yeah. is like that it doesn't pick and choose and we all have yeah. shit we all have a story we all have mental health problems and I, it's just I, like I feel the same sometimes whenever I talk about my addiction because I didn't do rehab or AA you feel a wee bit inferior to people sometimes people have said me the guy who went through AA said it to me before and I said you know maybe have a chat with your sponsor and tell him your approach you know because who's to judge anybody else's journey do you know what I mean and it's like and it, that's the same thing so whenever I'm sitting down to talk about things I didn't go through AI, I mm. didn't go to rehab, I've done it by myself, I've done it with what became my sponsor, and I've always got a sponsor, mm -hmm. I've always got somebody that I can, you know, communicate with whenever things are going a bit tough, Yeah, and I think that's important. Absolutely, you because know? even like, and in in it's like us sitting here having this conversation, it's nearly like an AA meeting in itself anyway, do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean, yeah, because yeah. we're actually, th we're touching on things, how we're growing, and, yeah. and I'm all about I'm not about war stories, like yeah. I'm far from it. Yeah, and that's actually there's an interesting thing. I was I I I went in the AA meeting last year. Uh, I would dip in and out, like I wouldn't mm -hmm. be a, I wouldn't be religiously, yeah. um, going every night or anything like that. But I dipped in, and uh, a boy came over to me and said to me, "You're some crack," and I said, "What are you <laughs> talking about?" He's like, "You just waltz in and out here whenever you want," and I said, "Yeah, I know." What what's your point? He's like, "You should be here doing this, 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 this." Yeah. this. But I've done 12 steps, no, it's fine. But yeah. like, and I was like, but hold on a minute. See if you go to the top of that road, the White Rock Road there, and take a right on Sunday mm -hmm. at two o'clock, I'll be playing against Waterford in the National League and one to three or 4,000 people and the place yeah. will be packed. That That's my recovery too. Yeah. Not just yeah. sitting in these rooms and, and, and seeing the day Training out every as day. Well like, and, absolutely. You know. <clears throat> and like, we're talking about, like, as I said, about being excited about who you want to become. Like, the, like yeah. what I watched your, um, the evolution, of, the success. evolution of success the yeah. other night and it was like I want to watch it again with yeah. my notebook I've actually got a program the evolution of you I'll give you the login details <laughs> but, <laughs> but tell it, me more about the uh, evolution of success because you actually have your own 12 steps I have my own 12 steps that, yeah, but which like is the, really cool yeah they'd, it ended up being 12 by accident right there's okay. actually 13 because oh, okay. it, start, it starts at 0 and we didn't want to have it at 13 in case people were superstitious or okay. whatever but look it really starts with the first the first part of it is like zero and it's like redefining what success means to you. And I think that is what the foundations for everything in life, because success to you is completely different to what it is for me. Well, what does it mean for you? <clears throat> for me, it means being able to not set my alarm ever. I haven't set it since 2012 and I never will again. Being able to travel and having freedom, you know, being able to help other people as much as I possibly can. Running a business that, you know, is profitable and allows me to give back, allows me to travel you know, and just having time, mm. you know, time for me is really, really good because I spent 13 years doing refrigeration. Mm. Now, I have done many movies, worked, traveled all over the place. And all of my movies, people have come back and send me emails saying, oh, my God, you know, that changed my life in a way. Right. And I just want to do that more because I can, you know, and that that's it. It's not an ego thing. I don't need a flash car. You know, I, as you said, like I've literally packed all my house up, put on Airbnb and literally packed all of my stuff into a backpack and I'm heading to Thailand tomorrow for and then Vietnam and then China. Can or I Japan, come? To China, Japan. <laughs> Can I um, come with you? Come, anytime. <laughs> pop in and out. You know, I'm going to be traveling. So 
anybody's welcome, you know, and that to me is what I define as success. Now, I know fellas that I went to school with and they've got really successful businesses in electrician, plaster mm. and all that, and their kids are their success. Yeah. You know, that's what they define as success, their children and their wife and their family. And it, it, it's totally two different versions, okay. but it doesn't matter. Mm. It's like, you know, that that's what it is. It's everybody needs to redefine what their own version of success is because it's so hard to fully understand what yours is with Instagram, with Facebook, with TikTok, because you're seeing all these other people's versions of success that in some instances aren't even that real. You know, they're done to get likes or whatever, but maybe they are, I don't know, yeah. no judgment. But you look at that and then you think, oh my God, I want that. But do you really? Yeah. In that moment, you're sucked into it. You got to really find out what it is you want, you know? Yeah, and it's like, you may be like the idea of it, but is it your like yeah. deepest desire to actually yeah, yeah, yeah. go for it? Well, that's the next part. It's like yeah. really clearly identify <laughs> why you want it. So <laughs> you your know, why? If it's not strong enough, then don't do it. Absolutely. That's what I say. And I think even, so as we're going to go on to the next part, because I want to go through yeah. sort of quickly the, 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 the 12 steps of, of that, because it is, it's just so, and can you watch that anywhere? Is that, or is that? Yeah, so if you go on, to, we've got now our academy, which we've built for this, which has all tools free. It's a mindset, so mindset, marketing, mindset academy? And marketing academy. Okay. Um, and it's step one is if you haven't been there our first bit of it that you haven't done is like we called master in your mindset because I think no matter where you're at in business whether it's you know owning a makeup brand or owning being a CEO for a business like you need your mindset to be in the right place and actually a lot of people already have their mindset really tapped in it's much more about it's much more normalized than what it was whenever I started all this, mm. do you know what I mean, in Ireland, like in 2012, whenever I was at rock bottom, okay. you know, I read The Secret, and Jack Canfield, Joe Vitale, and Bob Doyle, three people that were in The Secret, ended up being in the evolution of success, along with a host of other people. Um, How does that make you feel? Good, like, I think that sometimes I actually skim, there's so much going on that time, yeah. I didn't take it in, yeah. you know, I'll tell you what happened, <laughs> I ended up getting my iPad that I'd got from years previous, before I lost my job, I'd bought an iPad. And I, I decided to get it out of the cupboard and I brought it with me to LA at that time and I was about to film Bob Bob Doyle and I looked on my downloads PDFs and I had downloaded one of his free ebooks, like an opt-in. And I said, I showed him it and I said, that's so mad. I, I downloaded that years ago and now we're sitting here, you know, about to yeah. do an interview. And he actually just made a comment about drink, you know, and he said, oh, it's, I'm one year off alcohol today. And I, I got goosebumps. I was like, oh my God, because the night before I was at the American film market, um, we were putting a project into it for sale and I got handed like a gin and tonic, you know, we, I took it in my hand and I've been yeah. off drink for a month and I actually had it in my hand and I was about to drink it and just threw it in the, just dropped it in the bin while it was passing and walked on. And I said, uh, Bob, I told him that story. I said, listen, I've been off drink for a month and I think I, I need to stop this, but I nearly had a drink last night. And he's like, just do another day. Just do one more. Or no, he said, do one more month. Yeah. He said, do one more month from today. And I was like, do you want to know what I will? And after it, I got goosebumps. And I, I told him about that story at the premiere. And I said, I'm still off it now. And he's like, oh, that's brilliant. Okay. You know, so now we're like, it was weird because they were mentoring me through books. My darkest times couldn't get out of bed. And then actually in, in the flesh, face to face. It's amazing. I know. It was so good. Like That's class. <laughs> like, it's just it like a pinch good. me moment. But it's, yeah. are you good at like, even for, like we were talking there about Thursday night. Are you good at um, reflecting and being like, do you know what? I've actually done all right. Mm, no, or, or yes. I've got, I've got balance now. Okay. Like, for example, one of our movies, South, that we done, um, a movie that I'd done with a guy called Jerry Walsh, I didn't even buy a ticket to go and see it in the cinema. It was my first movie it was ever in the cinema. Right. Like, I went to see it on the premiere night and yeah. I seen it, but I didn't even really watch it because I was so nervous. Yeah. But I didn't even go to see it because I was working on another project. I was working on another movie. And I just, looking back at that, I'm like, I'm never going to let that happen again. Mm. You know, our movie Street Leagues was out and I nearly went to it every night when it was playing in Belfast, <laughs> you know, because I was thinking, why not? I can, you know, mm. and I'm, I'm re so you learn that at one point I had no balance and I was going from the next thing to the next thing to the next thing. And I wasn't really taking it in. Yeah. But now I can look back and go, holy shit, that was, that was good. And now I take a much, I can because the team's grown, the businesses have grown yeah. and I can do that. Um, if I had to do it again, would I slow down? Probably not, you know, because I had to do it like to get yeah. to where I'm at right now to slow down and appreciate the fact that I'm not going to, you know, go mm. as fast in the future through those moments. So we touched on your why. Yeah. That was I suppose the next part. Like, and it's yeah. something that I, I love asking people this because yeah. it's like even having the likes of McConnell and who's up. Yeah. You met him the other night. 
Yeah, he's, well yeah, he's a nice in the brother fir- as well. Yeah. Who, what is he? His brother was there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice guy. Yeah. And uh, even the first thing I said, the Anna, like Annette Kelly, yeah. even Little Penny Thoughts, who, which is like a wee bit like what you're talking about there. Um, like Little Penny Thoughts was probably the reason why I started Let's Face It in terms mm-hmm. of like the motivation. And yeah, I yeah. sort of looked up yeah. the Annette and touched base of her. And I, like, <clears throat> I met her yesterday and we were sitting there for five hours really? having a coffee and just ding dong things back yeah. and forward. And I'm like, so on the way home, I actually said to myself, wow, that shows you like the development, yeah. I suppose, of me to be able to be in that position to sit. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, totally. And yeah. It's kind of cool. Like, do you know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. that's why it's important to sit and reflect. But that's the first question I asked her as well about your why. Mm-hmm. And like you're doing all these things and working yeah. so hard and all these films. And surely you get tired too sometimes and you've yeah. had your own battles. But it has to come down to... Well, the one thing I'll say about the why is, and this is one thing that I think anybody I start to work with, whether it's through Mindset and Marketing Academy or even the Bankhouse Media, we get people to identify their why for their business. Okay. We get them to do it as a module, as an mm. onboarding process. Um, why did you start your business? You know, and really brain dump their why. It changes. <clears throat> your why changes all the time. Mm. You have to re-identify your why like all the time. I worked with a multi-level marketing company doing some mentoring and... Some people had been in that business for 20 years, <clears throat> but their why changed. They were like, we need to get some extra income for their family. Yeah. At this point, their kids were in university, mm. but they were still operating off the same why that they'd said 20 years ago. Mm. Not realizing you have to re-identify what it is and check in. Like I check in on mine all the time. Mm. When's the last time you checked in on it? Just before, whenever I was leaving Belfast, like, why am I going to Thailand? <laughs> you know, And then whenever I sat down and realized why... I'm going to be six hours ahead of everybody in UK time, Irish time, um, because of the, um, I'm going to be six hours ahead, so I'll be able to get up, do all my stuff, and then do some work with the team, Yeah. and then have my day relaxed. You know, so why do you do anything? You have to go back, you really have to have it solid, because if it's not solid, don't do it. Yeah. It doesn't work out the way that it's meant to, you know? Like, yeah. I, I, why am I going to Thailand? Why are we going to Vietnam? You know, why are we doing this movie? Why am I unemploying another person? Like I, I do it with everything. Mm. And it, it, it's so it's so interesting, and it's a wee bit like <coughs> whenever you were defending your successor a second mm-hmm. ago, I was sort of it had me thinking there, and I I've had the same reason mm-hmm. or the same goal for success, the same meaning in my yeah. way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, since probably three four weeks in what, the rehab. What, what is it? To be able to get up in the morning. And look in the mirror, brush my teeth, and tell myself that I'm doing all right. Mm. And which is amazing, and I still do it every day, and mm-hmm. everything else is a bonus. But I think, <clears throat> and this has just come into my head while you're sitting yeah. talking, <laughs> I think that it's nearly time for me to make another step. As in, Donald, like you've done brilliant to do that. Yeah. But what's the next step for success for you? Like? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, this is becoming a success, different mm-hmm. things in my life are becoming a success, but I still see that. Yeah. And do you know what, do you know what, what I mean? One thing that you can do is what I, especially whenever people, you know, are setting out to do something like, what is it you want to do? What do you want? I'm not sure. I want to be happy. Let's mm. just start with that. You know, what mm. do you got to do to be happy? But I find that your why is brilliant. Get That was getting you through your rehab, obviously, and making mm. you get up and, you know, be proud of yourself and feel mm. come face to face for yourself. I don't think you should stop that. But yeah. if you do add on to that or elaborate, maybe make it about other people. You know, I but that's my why. That's my why. I'm a purpose. Mm. Oh, As yeah. in, but I'm sorry, I was talking about success. So, okay, sorry, do you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, like, my why and my purpose is to show people, yes, yeah. the week you can have a better quality of life. And my purpose is mm. then to do that through action yeah. and to have my own rehab center and all that. So, yeah. there is sort of goals there yeah. and plans there. But it's just like, do I need to be that narrow minded in terms <laughs> of success? Or can I look at it as like the way you look at it? Oh, definitely. You need, you can do look you, at it. You, know you can I mean? totally widen it out, you know? Yeah. 100%, yeah. Like, the way that I always say for the, <laughs> what I start, what I do now with everything is I always clearly identify where I want to go. Like, what is it I want to do? I set a goal. And then every single day we're faced with opportunities. Okay. Opportunities to go on the drink. Yeah. Opportunities to open another business. Fuck, I get approached so much. <laughs> opportunities to do whatever it may be. One will bring you, bring you closer to your goal mm. and one will bring you further away. And if it brings you further away, no matter even if it's a really good business idea, you say no. Mm. Because it doesn't, it brings you further away from what it is that you want. For years, I was taking on opportunities and taking on business deals and taking on working with different people. And I didn't even realize they were bringing me further and further away from what I wanted to do and what was going to make me happy, my purpose and all that kind mm. of stuff. Whereas even if I changed that, 
It was an absolute game changer. Does people pleasing come into that? A bit, yeah. Ego boosts, you know, different things, whatever way you look at it. Mm. People pleasing, I probably got good at not being too mm. much of a people pleaser. Um, because I'm usually direct. If they're asking me to do something, instead of being people pleasing with that person, I usually like break down their idea or whatever it may be and yeah. actually help them restructure it in yeah. a way where it makes more sense. Maybe in the marketing side of things, if a business you're talking about. Yeah. But I rarely people please now. Yeah. I was people pleasing whenever I wanted them to do something with me, like drink. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> but I'm much more I don't think I don't think I do that as much. Mm. Maybe I do. And I, it's something that I always tap into because yeah. it's something that I always used to do as in terms of like even the validation but mm -hmm. you know always seeking the validation so but you're saying there about all yeah. the opportunities you're getting yeah. like I used to be like would have went in open with an envelope to, yeah. for people to be like right you're here and all thanks very much you're brilliant you yeah. know or whatever do you know yeah. but now I'm like <laughs> this if, doesn't if sit it, well if it me. brings you closer to your goal yeah. go yeah. if it brings you further away then yeah and that's you know it's a very that's a great <coughs> nugget to take Simple. away but it's even the, digi the digital marketing uh, mm -hmm. academy yeah tell me more about that so the mindset and marketing academy the mindset we had the evolution of success done yeah. um, and so many people that went through the program said like what next they had created these brilliant ideas that found out what they wanted to do um, and because I had a digital media agency Bankhouse Productions for film and Bankhouse Media for digital media agency you know yeah. doing all websites content creation every every single thing you need digitally we do there's 14 work in the company it's ran by Sharon Kirkpatrick best girl in the world just to your podcast with her oh did you yeah yeah, yeah Sharon yes she's amazing um, yeah Sharon's absolutely brilliant so she is um, so she runs a company with a whole group of people there and we do loads of things sales funnels marketing but really what I do is help people which my why change slightly I'm going to help people take their get their message out to the masses where they build up, whether it's with video production, whether it's with podcasts, whether it's with reels, whatever it may be, we're going to create them for them. Like a lot of people can't build a sales page. They can't build a members area <coughs> that is going to house all of their stuff, mm. all of their programs. Their programs are going to help so much people. So our business just helps people reach the masses, you know, and that's it. Yeah, but and it's something even personally at the yeah. minute, like that I'm sort of, struggling with mm -hmm. do you know what I mean and even small businesses and even big as well but even yeah. for someone even like me the top end of something like that could yeah. only be good mm -hmm. and I'm talking for the rest and, and I'm, I know there's a lot of people of my audiences that are starting up yeah. businesses in terms of the same age and well, sort like, of so many people message me because I've been um, because I travel so much to say how do you do that mm. you know how do you work remotely 100% of the time you know I work from my mobile I work from my laptop and anybody can do that so whether you want to pick your kids up from school or you want to go and live in Dubai, whatever it is you want to do, you can do that. There's a way to do it. But all you have to do is learn the skills. You know, you have to first realize that it's possible and to learn the skills to do so. Mm. Um, I don't think we get taught the right skills in school. Okay. I, I hated school. Um, <clears throat> I didn't like it at all. Uh, but I didn't. But now I, I own a school, you know. So what, I own an what? online academy that, that teaches people every day. And I couldn't wait to get out of school. But now it's it's an academy that actually is fun, that actually learns skills that you get <clears throat> teach the skills that can help you move on with your business and achieve your goals. And a lot of people think by having your own business, you have to be front of house. You have to be on social media. It has to be your face. You have to be on the podcast. But there's people that work for me that have their own business. They're subcontractors, but they're copywriters. They just learn how to copyright. These people are web developers. You know, so you can learn other skills and still be behind the scenes and get paid a lot of money. And live wherever you want. So it's not as... But I just feel that people don't know that. You know what I mean? And mm. whenever I discovered it, I want to tell everybody. Yeah. The same with the evolution of success. Whenever I discovered, holy God, you, you know, you can change your mindset and change your life. You can find your purpose. You can give up alcohol. You can do all these things. I want to tell everybody. So I made a movie about it. So then I made the sequel of the evolution of success, which is called The Digital Marketing Revolution. Um, which shows people which you will love. I'll send you a link yeah. to that. I didn't want to send two of them to you at once yeah. because, you know, it, it can be overwhelming. But the digital marketing revolution is one that I'm so proud of. I spent 18 months out in LA. I filmed four, 47 of the top digital entrepreneurs in the world that have been doing this since like the 90s, as soon as www. Oh. was created. And um, they're just showing people that it's possible. And I mean, this works for a GAA team. You know, it works for hairdressers. Like... Mm. 
whatever it is, like one of the first module in our course, Life's a Beach, is you're already the expert. Like this knowledge that you have right now that is valuable to somebody else. Mm. And, and everybody's the same. It could be parenting. It could be driving. It could be whatever they've been through. Yeah. Going through a divorce. Somebody else is going through that right now and needs support and maybe don't feel comfortable talking to their family yeah. about it and maybe want to talk to an, an online expert that's got an online course for it. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it can go anywhere. And it's just tapping into it. And you mentioned there even about the, the whole curriculum. Yeah. What, 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 what would you change? What would, what would young mm. Matthew need in his teenage years within school? Yeah. Um, it's an interesting question. What I would need yeah. like, I probably, you know, in a way I'm glad I didn't have, wasn't diagnosed with dyslexia because I'm, I'm not into labels. And I, I'm glad I didn't have that because I never thought there was anything wrong with mm. me. I just thought I struggled or I didn't like, I just thought I didn't like English. That was it. Yeah. Turns out I listened to audiobooks every day. Yeah. I love books, but I didn't like reading them. Um, I don't know. One or two guys who work for me in Bank House, both of them have been through a school here. I don't know much about it. Um, Aquinas. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of that school? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So they actually are so creative. Okay. Right? They're a bit like us all. You know, ADHD, I don't know what, they, they, they tell me this themselves anyway, I never really listened to what a label is, but they've, they've always said they've had challenges in various different areas, but they are the most creative people I've ever met in my life. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, so I would probably open it up to that, where it doesn't have to, your, your I don't know, it, it, how good you are doesn't go on how good your maths are, how good your English is. Mm -hmm. I would open it up way more to being creative. I would be teaching editing skills. I would teach accountancy. Uh, in school, basic tax returns, all that kind of stuff. I would do a lot of things like that and give people the tools that they know how to go and open a business. I think it's like programming to work for somebody. Um, I would change that. You know, I have changed that with my own online academy. Mm. Um, and I do work with that now with Inner City Enterprise. You know, so we're helping pe people that are coming through. We're going to be offering them our platform and our course as well. It's class. You know, because it's just... People just need to relearn. Now, it's not all going to just come to you. And if mm. you don't know, that's okay. <clears throat> and if you think you're not good at something, it's not. You just need to... It's just, ed education is important, but it's just what education and how you're going to receive it. And what are you tapping You can learn more it? of an online course for like £97 than you could out of a whole... I don't know, don't want to say anything. Degree, potentially. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, listen, I'm with you. And the whole mm. thing, it, it kind of is systemized. Yeah. In terms of... this. Is, I said it the other night about yeah. people thinking they have to have all the ducks up in the row. Yeah. Like, so you go to primary school, yeah. go to secondary school, go to your formal, yeah. then you have to go to university, then you have to go get a job, then yeah. you have to get the, a man only, or a woman, the then reason, you have to get married, oh, yeah. and then, then you just get and kids, and then, then you have to live the rest yeah. of your life. And I'm like, no. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you mentioned there, like, you don't know, like, and Kira actually said something to me the other week about, like, you don't know until you know. Yeah. Do you know what it is? It's well, tapping well, like, into well, the The different... thing is, it's like, I... Jen, the only reason why I say this and so passionately and so strongly and like is because I've seen it so many times. Yeah. All the people in the digital marketing revolution, none of them are, are doing anything they went to school with. Yeah. None of them. <laughs> yeah. You know, but they've all got multi-million dollar businesses. Mm -hmm. It's insane. You know, of how they can do that. And that can also seem really off-putting for someone. So someone could be watching that right now and say, that looks so overwhelming. That's not what I want. And then just shut it down. Yeah. But you have to remember that you got to go back to what it is you want. Spend more time with your kids, go on an extra holiday. There's a way to do that, mm. you know. And I think, <clears throat> see, even for people watching in, and they're probably going, because I've talked to loads of people about this. It's all right, because you have so many businesses and you have so many yeah. films made and you've yeah. worked with all these famous people and you're going to Thailand tomorrow and you met up with... Uh, big movie stars in LA mm. and you've done us sorry for you mm. and some people I'm even kind of getting it a tiny bit of, like it's sorry for you because yeah. and I'm like no you were actually in the gutter like I had, I, had, I, so, the gutter. I had someone <laughs> rap my door right whenever I lived in Dublin this happened to me twice <laughs> rap my door and ra rang me outside hey can you let me in I said who the hell are you yeah. I'm from the social welfare it's like what are you doing here you need to show us your bedroom I said I'm not, I'm not showing you my bedroom what are you talking about if you don't show us your bedroom, we're cutting off your, your employment uh, benefit mm. because you haven't show, you haven't proved that you live here. And I said, what do you want me to do? Like, And I was living in Thomas Street at the time and the bedroom was tiny. Mm. It was a mess, obviously, because it just got yeah. up out of bed. I was battling with depression, mm. do you know yourself? And 
I said to the girl, like, what the hell are you doing this for? Like, is this was your job? Mm. I was really probably rude to her, but I was so ashamed that someone had to come in and see my house like that. And then I was at rock bottom, the lowest point of my life. And if they, if I didn't let her do that, she was going to cut off my unemployment. I didn't have any money for rent or for food then or for like anything. So whenever people say to me, oh, it's okay for you. Yeah. I'm like, you haven't even hit the low that I hit. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and not to say they haven't, they, they could have potentially had. Um, <clears throat> but the second guy that done it, uh, I really let, let into him as well, you know, and I said to him, like, what are, you, what are you doing this for? And we ended up getting on really good. And he asked me, would I join the Rings End Rowing Club? <laughs> and come down, he said, you need to get out of the house. He said, you yeah. need to get off unemployment. This isn't for you. And I said, I know, mm. you know, and we ended up becoming somewhat acquaintances, yeah. you know, which was a rocky start. But whenever people say that it's OK for you, it, it wasn't, though. Yeah, it it really, really wasn't, and I don't think, even whenever I look back, I don't even think I've took into consideration how far, it's all came. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I I I think that, at some point I might sit down and have a real, reflection. moment of reflection. Yeah, mm. and I think it is that that part even for me is because someone actually came to me and like you, you're far too hard on yourself. Like, mm. do you know what I mean? You just need to actually sit back and be like, do you know, like, look like what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like even for you, like yeah. on a obviously much, much, much bigger scale, but Not the same really, the same thing yeah. in terms of how we feel, yeah. in terms of contentment and what we're doing, we're doing the right things and stuff. And it's it's yeah. it's incredible. So it's mm. sometimes we do need to give ourselves a wee a wee tap in the back, like and say, yeah. do you know what? It's, uh, so does everybody though. Yeah. We're we're there at and like getting out of bed for at one point was for me was an achievement. Yeah. You know, getting out of bed, making a phone call, deciding what I wanted to do. Like I didn't know what I wanted to do. Whenever I started this, whenever I read the secrets, like figure out what you want. And I was like, I don't know. And I had to just choose happiness. And I was yeah. like, okay, is this making me happy or not? And the thing that wasn't making me happy, I, I tried to stop doing, you know, and that's a good place for anybody to start. A lot of people will just say right now, I don't know what I want. Mm. And that's okay because there's so many people have been there. I was there. I'm sure you were there at one point. And it's like, do you want to be happy? Yeah. Well, that's a good start. Let's see. Does this, does this make you happy? And then from there, just little bits will, will happen and try and loads of different things. Mm. So do you think something like the 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 agency would be, uh, like a lot of people know what mm -hmm. the situation that I'm in in terms of trying to grow this thing. So for someone like mm -hmm. me or the viewer, like, mm -hmm. how, do you think it'd be good for me? Is it, do you sign up to this or what? what, what? Oh, Mindset and Marketing yeah, Academy? Yeah, yeah. Well, Mindset and Marketing Academy has various different purchase, like products that you can buy. But okay. the evolution of success and the digital marketing revolution and it's, it's totally free this? it's free like they're free to everybody we in lockdown we put those free i made the other movie in lockdown but the evolution of success is free that's a part of it that's like okay. i think we're at kickstart everybody we have like a 90 minute training on how to start your first online business with no technical skills for free okay like so there's so much stuff there for free yeah. people come into my agency bank house media and need stuff done websites we get i get paid from those people you know so there's a lot of stuff that I want to give back. Yes. Contact me. Like, I mean, I would probably, the biggest challenge <laughs> that my team has is that I connect with somebody and then I'm chatting to them and then they're like, yeah, I'll get the team to do that because they maybe haven't got a budget and I'm trying to help them out. And Sharon's like, you got to stop doing that because we're yeah. overwhelmed with work and we have to charge. But that's totally separate. With the Mindset and Marketing Academy, .com, if you want to go on, yeah. the evolution of success is for free. And so is the Digital Marketing Revolution. And there too, we, the way we built those is they're like mentors. Yeah. You don't need anything else, genuinely. <laughs> if, you, if you can action those and you can take those, you won't need anything mm. else. Um, other people that do come into our organization do come on to Life's the Beach. It's $500 yeah. to start it. Um, what's, like a, what's that? It's a 12-week course. Start your okay. first online business in eight weeks. Okay. And it teaches you, like, you're already the expert. Identifies what you're an expert in. Build not your first profitable product. You know, mastering your traffic, mastering your audience. We give them all the sales funnels. Like, everything's pre-built. So everything is really, I know that might sound like, well, the way that I look at it, to get, do Life's the Beach and start your first online business in eight weeks, it's less money than the device that you're watching it on. That's yeah. the way that we've done it. Because if you can afford a phone yeah. at like £800 or whatever it is, or £30 a month because we do all payment plans mm. like that, then you can afford to like take the action. But a lot of people, they want to do it, but it's taking the action to do it is, is a different thing. So... So That's, there's an idea, and Bob Proctor talks about this, and like, yeah. so it's the idea. 
it's like nearly like the no doing gap in a way yeah. like so we have this idea and that's the difference between people who as i said the start yeah. about stand still and the really successful people yeah. because people turn ideas into actions like, yeah who are successful yeah and you've done that yeah but like how, how do you how do you go about that matthew in terms mm -hmm. of there's someone sitting here watching going like i have this idea for a business i think it could really work um but basically i don't have the balls to do it there's a couple of things. So if you have a business idea right now and you think that it could work, there's a good chance that it can. Yeah. The first thing you got to do is do a bit of research and check and see, is there a business out there that's already making money at it? Mm -hmm. The answer to that will probably be yes as well. And then you can say, well, why can't I? Why can't I have a tiny bit of that market? Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Why can't I take a tiny bit of it? People are constantly trying to come up with recreating the wheel and doing different ideas and trying to change things. <clears throat> there's no need to do that tap into an industry that's already working and take a tiny portion of it because it's just going to be you by yourself at the start and you're not going to need much to get the overheads over, you know? And your why is what will set you apart from your competitors. Yeah. And people will relate to your why. You know, if you've been through addiction, whatever you've been through, if you are clearly identified about your why. So, and then it's really just about, I think just watch like our 90 men train for a start. You know, you will get the knowledge to do that and not to push them to RP. There is other ones that are there yeah. on YouTube. How to start a first how to start your first online business you know watch the video mm. you know and things like that because if you've got the idea it's just about now understanding that if you don't have the knowledge to do it to go and start that that moment that's okay how yeah. the hell can you i want to drive doesn't mean that you don't have to do 12 lessons on your theory test yeah. do you know what i mean yeah. you can't expect to get in that car and drive to dublin you know you have to learn you have to go through stages and then you have to you know, master it. Mm. So people are too hard on themselves and they go with a business idea. That didn't work for me. But did you learn how to run a business? Did you speak speak to people within, like one of the steps within the evolution of success, two of them, asking for help and another one, finding your mentor. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to find someone who's been in that field or, or get somebody like that. Like I am open to answer, asking any, answering any questions at all. Like mm. on Instagram, I will talk to anybody. Yeah. And that's because I have got flexibility and I have got time. Yeah. And I have I, way more time now than ever. Even, but I love even that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because it's very much like <laughs> when people do get a bit successful, they sort yeah. of become, they forget where they came from. And yeah. the very fact that you're even sitting here and being so open and honest and tapping mm. into, hi, so do I did wrap my door do you know what yeah. I mean six years or whatever it was yeah. and this is what I had to go Ten through years ago. Do you yeah. know, it's incredible it's, it's, it's amazing that was one of the things I did tell that story <clears throat> whenever I was with young entrepreneurs I'm like anybody in the room ever had social welfare yeah. wrap their door and like the, nobody one person put their hand up but the murmur throughout the room you knew like, and I said well yeah. that happened to me and they were like totally shocked because at that point they'd seen me with just done a movie with Colin Farrell and they were <laughs> they didn't they couldn't place it in two different things. And I said, it's it's just a process, you mm -hmm. know. But this has took me 10 years. Like, I signed on unemployment 1st of August 2012, and now it's 2023. So the whole process has took, like, just, just over, it's now just over 10 years. So patience is something that people need to, people don't yeah. have now, but they need, they need to have. Especially us, like, yeah. uh, the, from the journeys we've done, like, yeah. as in, we're drinking and stuff, you always want everything yesterday. Oh, I know. <laughs> like oh, like, I know, I know. It is. <laughs> you, you, so do, for you, you want to actually go through that process. Yeah. <clears throat> That's why we opened the academy. That was one of my whys, just to speed up the process for other people. Number one, you don't have to hit rock bottom like I did. And then number two, you don't have to, like, search and keep asking everybody. Hmm. You know, you can just, like, condense it down into, like, a, a, a handful of people that you work with, hmm. that you trust, and then just speeds up the process. Class. That's all I have now. Unreal. And you mentioned there about uh, mentors and maybe mm -hmm. even a sponsor if, if, so, yeah. if it's someone who's rec in recovery. But the importance of surrounding yourself with good people mm -hmm. in terms of your circle. I know you do a lot of traveling stuff, but I know you're very yeah. keep, keep in touch with yeah. people. Um, how important has that been for you during your success uh, as in your ma network? Majorly, you yeah. know. Um, <clears throat> Steve G. Jones in the evolution of success he ended up becoming my mentor um, th unofficially at the start and then officially and just helped me through so many things like I looked at him and he had all these online businesses and I was like how do you do this you know asking him questions and really he then got a buzz off me because I implemented all the stuff that he said Yeah. so he then was fulfilled by that you mm -hmm. know I always find that when somebody asks me a question and I'm able to answer them I feel good so I know whenever I ask somebody else a question and they're able to answer, they're going to feel good. Yeah. So why would you deprive somebody from feeling good, you know? 
Um, I have paid mentors. I have people that okay. we pay in the organ in the company. I've got mentors for my company. I've got free mentors, which are now my friends. Um, I mentor a lot of people myself now, which is weird to even think. You know, Steve says that you know we start out me mentoring him mentoring me and that's flipped kind of, <laughs> in a way which is weird you know give me some of them nuggets back <laughs> we are we're like flipping it around it's, it's hilarious and i love him and i yeah. love chatting to him and we have like the best conversations now it's it's so good um but I, they come in many different forms you know yeah. so you have people that listen to a book you know that's a, i class that as a mentor mm. you know and unofficial and official mentors paid mentors and free mentors but it's somebody who has a bit more knowledge than where you're at for wh to where you're going. Yeah. They just have to have a tiny bit more information. And sometimes you speed up fast. Like I was talking with Jack Canfield, who wrote, who's in The Evolution of Success, and he said the same thing about Tim Ferriss. He started out being Tim Ferriss's mentor, mm. and now Tim Ferriss is mentoring him with his digital space. And it was funny just to hear him. I went to, whenever I filmed with him, it was in Las Vegas for three days, and we were at a seminar. And Jack was, I don't want to say in his 80s, but he could have been. He was, I, I, I forget, but <laughs> I don't know what age he is. He was the oldest person in the room, I think. And mm. he, I don't think he'd mind you saying that. But he sat with a notepad and wrote for three days, listening to, listening to people talking. Yeah. Like literally taking everything in. You never know it all. Mm. Ever. Like it's, it's not possible. And I think that's why I love marketing. And I love, you know, all this stuff. Because you learn every day. There's always a new challenge. There's always another business that needs help. There's always somebody that needs help. Mm. You know, and sometimes the word marketing can get a bit of stick, you know, a bit of the sleazy word like marketing. But if you've got a dating, if you've got, if you're on a dating site, you're yeah. a marketer. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, you're marketing yourself. Mm -hmm. If you've got a CV, that's what you are. You know, if you're putting yourself out there and that's, that's okay. You might, I'm learning the skills how to do that and market properly is going to change your life. Mm. It Absolutely. Genuinely is. It, it's changed mine class isn't it like, and yeah. it's something that i i definitely uh, i'm going to mm -hmm. tap into because it's uh, i think you need to learn them now especially with yeah. everything that's going on with you because the faster you do you know the, the quicker you'll get to where you want to go yeah you know because you're going to need them with like your website your your products here like even yeah. these do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. getting those out there having an e-commerce business if you know have you heard of coffee and jim and coffee is it jim and coffee the brand it's oh yes huge. yes that's, that's your man the singer is yeah, that how it is or something? No, no, no. I think it's no? a company. That, I think they originated from down south. I'm ah. not sure. But anyway, they've, yeah. they've blown up to like, I think they're like a billion dollar brand. I'm mm. not 100% of quote me on all <laughs> of that. But if they can do it, why can you not? Yeah. It was a, it, there was a meaning behind that. Their why was strong. They're related to people, mm. you know, and then they hit the masses. So anybody can do that. If they just need to like, just, I think it all comes from your why. Mm. What about naysayers? Naysayers? I don't know. Did like you ever I, experience anything like that? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Like I've given me fuel. Like I, okay. I'm the type of person that I get fuel from it. Ammunition. If like? somebody said like you can't do something, I would do it just to prove them wrong. And sometimes, <laughs> it's took me two years, three years in the wrong direction. Do you know what I mean? Like on a project that has took me years, and I done it to prove somebody wrong, instead of it wasn't what I wanted to do. Okay. So now I've got a bit more control over that. Um, but if somebody says I can't do something. I don't believe them okay. for a start. You know, I didn't, I never would have got a job at the level I wanted to work as in a production company. And I tried. So I opened my own production company. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, that's, that's kind of what you have to do. Um, it's not, it does, you do, it does land sometimes, you know, when you do get a, fa you do, it's, you're not totally, you have emotions like you do feel, of course. you know, I wish they didn't feel that or I wish they did support you. But some people just aren't going to get you, you know, and, and you're not going to get some other people and that's it. There's not, there's not much you can do about that. Mm. And as hurtful as it is in the moment, you got to just like water off a duck's back, you know, and just keep focused on where you want to go. Mm. Does this situation of worrying about what somebody else is think, thinks of me bring me closer to what I want or further away? Mm. It's going to bring me further away. You just got to push it out of your head. Yeah, and we actually use a term uh, in Qmor, imaginative functioning. Okay. Just really creating things in your head or scenarios in your head that... Don't even exist. And how often do we do that? Like, oh, yeah, totally, people, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But especially <coughs> in the world with social media, and I know yeah. there... And the reason why I asked you about naysayers is I know there is people... I used to be one of those people now. I, 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 I'm past it, as in... Yeah. 
other people's opinions of you. Yeah. And and look, it might come back as you start to grow and then you feel mm. a bit more of imposter syndrome somewhere else. That's what it's going to get into, yeah. It'll <laughs> pop back. It'll come, it comes back every time I push myself and then people are then, I think people then are questioning my ability. Yes. Then it comes back again. So imposter syndrome? I think it's a sign of like growth, you know? Really? Yeah. As soon as I start to feel a bit of imposter syndrome, I know, right, okay. And what, how you deal with that? So say if you feel an imposter in selling these jumpers, mm. you know, why would somebody buy mine? Educate yourself on everything about selling jumpers. Become an expert in it. Nobody thinks you're an imposter. You've got that in your own head. But just solve it in your own head. And by that, you're actually going to have more knowledge in selling more jumpers. And you're going to not <laughs> be an imposter. Do you know what I mean? So anything what it is, if you're an imposter playing in an orchestra, just become better. Mm. Whatever it is you feel like you're an imposter around, teach yourself more. Do more YouTube videos, listen to more books, do more online courses, become the best at it. That if someone does ever challenge you to expose your imposter syndrome side, have the answer, mm. you know? Cross the T's and dot the I's. Kind of, because number one, nobody cares, is really thinking about you being an imposter anyway. You, But this is a way to sort of get it knocked out of your own head, mm. you know, and to say, like, Okay, I feel like an imposter. I'm a, that's a ref reflection of myself right now. Let me just mm. get that out of the way by learning everything about it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? No, oh, absolutely. And, and and like, listen, even the imposter side of it, like I can definitely tap even the other night, yeah. of course. But I was talking there about the gig that I have on mm. Friday, yeah. this or and Sunday. So it was oh, yeah, it already yeah. have happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we can just pretend like it already happened. It's all okay, but it's not. Um, <laughs> it and I, and obviously, exactly, because you're sitting saying to me, "What are you talking like?" And yeah. every like I spoke to four or five people about yeah. this, like tapping in, this, and they're like, I "Don't know what are you worried about." Yeah. Do you, do you, well, look, you're going to be talking about your story. You can't change your story in like twenty four hours. Well, that's true. So you already know it. Yeah. Like, there's not much you can do. Yeah. You know, you can feel nervous about going up on stage, and there is things you can do about that with breathing exercises and like all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And just knowing that you might mess up, you know. And that's okay. Yeah. Just uh, for even people watching, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's okay yeah. for us to because. Listen, we're talking about everything that you've done that's all been yeah. class, but we've also failed. Oh, yeah. Like, I spent two hours today with my 13-year-old, my best friend's daughter, um, sitting outside Starbucks, you know, going through, she's been bullied in school, she okay. won't go to school, she won't go in, um, and nobody really knows what the hell to do with her, you know, with her mom and her buddy, you know, so I was like, well, everybody's trying their best, and I was like, look, and there's so much going on in her head so much going mm. on in her head they're going to beat me up they're going to punch me and I said what if they do what if they punch you do you know that's the worst thing can, can happen you're going to you know be sore for a minute mm. but like I'm not saying that that's a good thing but I'm just saying like your worst fears if they happen it's not the end of the world do you know I said like she's she's an amazing creative girl and mm. I love her with all my heart you know it's very difficult to sit there and go through that stuff but even her worst fears you gotta just I think you gotta just sort of lean into them and be like listen you gotta go back to school tomorrow mm -hmm. and if you do get punched that person's gonna expose themselves for who they are and they're gonna be disciplined so maybe it's not a bad thing mm. <laughs> you know what I mean maybe it's not gonna be the worst thing in the world but it's that you were talking about the story that you tell yourself in your head that isn't true yeah. she's telling herself a hundred stories now that aren't true yeah you know and even if they are it's not the worst in the world yeah it's not the end of the world so that's incredible, well, and that's a good way. <laughs> yeah, but it's a great way of even even what I talked about there, that imaginative function. Yeah, it's a great way for even like stopping that and being yeah. like, so what is the worst going to happen here? Oh yeah, do you know totally. what I mean? What what genuinely, and it's yeah. like it's not that big of a deal in the grand yeah. scheme of things. But I suppose like what 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 what's next for you? I know you're going away tomorrow. Um, what in terms of uh, business, in terms of films, and yeah. what's is there? Is Everything is just about mindset and marketing academy now. That's okay. basically what the next sort of decade is for me. I just turned forty. Um, so the last is this the part uh, why I say you don't look at day over thirty? Oh yeah, no, that's <laughs> grand. no. Is that right? <laughs> you're right. Everybody says no. I'm joking. But um, no, the so basically the last one I feel the last ten years I feel like was building, you know, and now I get yeah. to relax into it and just implement. Mm. You know, I feel like I really just put the work in, and now I'm working with so many amazing people in the mindset and marketing academy. And I told you about this before off camera. You know, there's so many entrepreneurs come in and so many brilliant mm. business people. And I'm inspired every day by them. Yeah. So it doesn't feel like work. Mm. It doesn't feel like I'm working, you know. It, it feels great. So I plan on traveling for this decade. I've condensed myself into like one bag. And we'll see how long it goes. We'll see how far I get. That's class. Unbelievable. Yeah. And here, do you know what? 
there, there's a million things that I'd love to even talk about in more mm-hmm. depth, which yeah. we should online or we, we should you do want, more yeah. stuff uh, together, like because yeah. um, it's so insightful. But I think even for anybody watching, for them is to know that no matter how tough you are getting it, or no matter mm-hmm. how bad things might be, in terms of your finances, in terms of your mental mm-hmm. health, in terms of alcoholism, in terms of just getting the tape, that we all have the ability yeah. to bounce back. Like ask for help. That's the only yeah. thing of somebody that's been through it and somebody that you trust. Yeah. Um, even if you don't trust them, just get out of your system. Yeah. You know, and don't have any shame in that. Especially in, in the north of Ireland, it's like a real. Yeah. I'm too proud, and I went through that. Our egos Ask and all things help, like yeah. that. That's what I would say. Absolutely, and that the the, the other big part was about um, the people who we surround ourselves with, yeah. like and the and the people who we get advice off. Yeah. And you said something about um, them as actually being there and doing it and wearing the t-shirt, but it's because it's so often yeah. that we go to people who haven't. Yeah. And I've done that. Yeah. And uh, it's very much like. Why do you do that for? What's yeah. this for? Do you not know all the cons that can come to this? Yeah, but what about the pros? Do you know? know, and it's so, oh, so, no. impo- it's so, so important. And that's the like. thing. Like, I only try to teach anything I've been through yeah. and had experience with because it's just fine that you can relate to somebody so much better. And I do relate and get best advice from people that have been through something similar to myself in a way, like are, are where I want to go to. Yeah, and that's class. And that's the big learning, I suppose, that I got. So someone who's mm-hmm. actually in alignment with what, yeah. where you're going and where you want to be, and it's cool. Yeah. But Matthew, thanks very much. <laughs> I really appreciate yep, it. No and uh, for, for those who um, want to follow what Matthew's doing, he's going, to, to, he's going away tomorrow. And I suppose all mm-hmm. the businesses and the films and stuff that he's involved in, I'll stick his Instagram uh, below for the different businesses and his own personal one, as he says. Tap on them, reach out and, and ask yep. him if you have any, if you need yeah. any advice or anything like that, and he'll be more than accommodating. But a big thanks to our friend, uh, Kira Daly, for yeah. sponsoring this week's episode. Thanks very much, Kira, for all your support and your continued support. And uh, go check out Kira's uh, website, www.kiradalymakeup.com, for all your makeup needs, goods, accessories, mm. courses, yeah. smoky <laughs> eyes, everything, the lot. So, yeah. no, thank you, Kira. Uh, I really appreciate it. And thank you all for tuning in. Really appreciate the support. And uh, yeah, that's us. Show's back on the road, and I'll see you all next week again. Thanks. Bye.